Hello everyone, this is Anway Joe here. We're playing From the Depths. This is Targeting Science Supply Lines Video 2. If you're finding yourself here, this is my nuts and bolts of my gameplay to make my weapons of war for the campaign. So, this is a little bit different in the video. I was not planning on making another video on supply lines, but I decided to for this very reason. So, I did get my first supply line set up, as you can see, with connecting base 2. I'm going to call it base 2 to base 3. And they're trading back and forth. Now, this is my campaign. I am not going to save uh, anything on this. I just wanted to show that I could complete it. Here's some of the issues. The By building the small ship, it has a small trade ring which means that there is a lot of them so I thought the trade ring of all ships were this size right here and as you can see in the background the same thing basically the same size when I was building the small ship <clears throat> it was inside next to another ship which made it look bigger so I didn't realize it was small until I started putting them in play, but I decided to put them all in play just to see if it would work because I already had it. So as you can see, I have my trade base up here. And if you look at the material down on the bottom of the page, you see it jump and skip every once in a while and there's a little bit of load of resources. That is, as you can see, kind of you can kind of see the numbers bouncing back and forth with the trade ring here. You see that like 28 green number? That's it transferring to this base. Another benefit why I want to set up these supply lines is this. So like say this base is coming under attack and I have nothing to defend. Receiving. I can sit here, change it to hold no materials, sit here, Receiving. and change it to full. It just transferred instantly all those materials. I mean this is my car the cargo ship. Uh but Basically, I could change it at any time I want to wherever location I want just by that. So this is why I like this idea of having the supply lines. Um, instant transfer of material. And when that happens, like, so let's just say the enemy is coming this way, they made it around the back. I have t I have time. It's slowly creeping up. I could, tr if when I build the supply line to over here, I could transfer all the material over here and build a uh, a ship and come interrupt it, or attack it, or whatever you want to do. Um, or if they're coming in really hot, fast, like really quick, and I was building something here, I can dissolve it, scrap it, and then trade it all the way back up to here, and then they can't get to it. So, and it's instant. I don't need to send backup. I don't need to launch a fast ship to do it. It's already in place. So, the cost of this, each of them are about a, th a little over a thousand, so like 1,200 if I remember correct. So, the grand scheme of things, it's about 20,000 points, 25,000 points to do this. That's not, to me, a too huge of a cost. If, um, to make it transfer like this the huge time waster is to place them in put them in place and honestly because they were so slow I was using the cargo ship and kind of just scooting it along as it was so like it made me lead to believe there's two things why I made this second video I want to make changes first off can we inc what what makes it this trade circle bigger and if we could make it bigger, will it make the overall cost of the ship bigger? Or can we make it smaller? Like, what is the requirement to make the trade circle? Okay. And then from what I'm seeing is, even though this thing moves at 3 meters per second, it's useless to set up for speed that way. So I was going to use my cargo ship to put it in place anyways. So there's no real point... To have it have any speed so can we reduce the ai take all that stuff out and make it cheaper anyways so that's what we're going to go over on this video 
two points again. Do we need the AI? Do we need it to move on itself at all? And the second one is how do we get this trade circle bigger? Because obviously there's other ships that have them bigger. So I'm going to be right back. We will go to the designer. So we are currently in the designer mode now. And this is my current uh, build for the, the supply line ship. I, like I said, I did change it a little bit from that one video offline just to kind of get going. So what I want to do is first off, we're at 1,148 materials cost uh, to make it work. So we'll see if we can make it less than that, which would mean it's obviously better. Anytime you can make things cheaper, especially if they're expendable, the better so we have the trade ring right here but I believe that is because of the base and this is what I was talking about so when I was building that ship I'd seen the trade rings out here so I really wasn't paying attention that that could be because of that now even with that deleted this is the normal zone of the actual um, I guess the resource zone. So that wasn't even helpful. So let's go ahead and scrap this. And why it's faster to do this because that thing is slow is to come over here. We're going to come across. And I found out it, even if you're doing that with like your mouse, you can kind of guess where you are way. I think I'm way up here. So I'm outside that circle and load in another one. I want to be outside the zone to look at the circle. See, no, okay, so it gives the size of a trade circle right here. Okay. Receiving. So, how do we get this bigger? And is there a way to get bigger? Another idea is I'm going to spawn in my giant test base reason why it has a ton of materials right so let's go ahead and bring in this this ridiculous thing 20 22 million cargo space okay yeah so the circle of this took over that uh, circle so obviously this has a bigger trade ring so we can increase it all right, so how do we get it to increase is the biggest what if right now because I don't know. So we're going to go and delete that. So we, I just wanted to show you there is a bigger circle. Receiving. <laughs> this thing is, yeah, this thing is just not very stable, but that's fine. So we'll wait until this goes away did tell it to scrap right it's just a huge <laughs> a bunch of materials well actually this is a good test too so as it's taken away its materials its stuff oh, it did wow okay so it did shrink as it was getting down um okay so i was thinking what could be some of the factors that make this circle bigger well, it could be the physical volume of it, as in like how many blocks there is. I was also thinking storage containers would probably be the biggest capability. So first thing I'm going to test is storage container. Let's just slap a few more on this and see what happens. Oh, yep. It's already bigger because you know it basically transferred across the resource zone. So that helped out a lot. Obviously this thing is going to sink. It's not meant to hold that much weight. So let's just try two. Oh yeah. So it shrank. So that means then there's got to be like a certain amount. Let's go three and see. Three comes out to here. It's just past that line. Let's see if four does matter. 
So four. It looks like it's about the same. So it looks like three of them, roughly, will make... And I just wanted to see two. Yeah, so it's less than one. So it looks like about three or four of these cargo containers will increase the trade zone. Now, why is that such a big deal? So, for instance, if you look at the amount of points that these cost, is 115 points per cargo container, okay? So by adding two more cargo containers on this thing, it it has expanded, I don't know, like the trade circles right here, maybe three to four times bigger. That means three to four times, or it should be like, well, I'm dividing the amount of ships that I need to have to make this trade belt. So instead of having like 25 of them, 30 of them to make this snake going up, I'm, I'm subtracting a significant amount because the trade circle is bigger that means i'm going to be using less material to make the same thing happen so some of the other factors that makes this thing expensive is i have an ai on it i um have a little battery on it i do need to probably a heart stone on it or i'm going to play with a heart stone but, you know, the propeller, the systems, the hydrofoils, we don't necessarily need all that, I don't think. What we need is, it looks like three material, or three cargoes, or four, will make a big enough zone. So, another thing is we need to I make it to float. Even though this is going to be pulled probably out of play most of the time, these aren't going to be something that I'm going to be moving around too much. So... They could just be rafts. So if I need three of these, our storage is 54,000, or sorry, the storage is 54,000 each. And other than these, they sink. So these are negative buoyancy of 358. So some of these, I think there were some that are positive. No, they look like they're all negative. I thought there was some that were positive. No, I'm sorry. I misspoke. So some of these I thought were, but... So basically, it looks like having four large storage containers will give you the biggest trade, and it's not going to cost that many points, and then we just need to slap on stuff to make it float. So let's go ahead and start building that then we're gonna go ahead and build I think it was a start new do 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 okay this is driving me nuts in the background here let's just go ahead and scrap this real quick Receiving. okay ee -E. and we will load in no we should just build there it is. Okay. So we're going to start off with four cargo containers. And this is going to be the hardest, heaviest part. So if we come in, it's kind of like just, I'm thinking like do something like this. And let's kind of make it this the center. So right now we're already at 460 material, but I believe this will bring up the trade zone. To the biggest area okay so that works perfect and now we just need to make this float now we don't need to make it float that high we just in case it comes into play you know we don't want it to sink to the bottom of the ocean again i think the wood for the amount of cheapness is um the highest buoyancy because basically it's 27 for one block this is a five class box five material cost block which is 23 so the wood is still the cheaper one and we just wrap it with some some wood and again yeah this is going to kind of rock around i believe quite a bit let's go ahead and turn on end mode build this a little bit faster there we go but 
in the end, this should work out really easy. There we go. And there we go. And now maybe eh, do a cross beam that way. We're not going to put any AI on it. It should be pretty uh, easy going. And probably want to go up and up as well. So we'll build another layer up and just do two. So we're going to kind of put like a dome up here and then we're going to put a, a water pump up top because they're pretty cheap and close it in and that should keep it from sinking in theory. If not, then you just make it a little bit bigger. We'll throw in a, we'll throw in some water pump. We're actually, we should probably put a small Actually, while I'm thinking about it, I don't need two. And of course, I deleted that. Uh, all right, here we go. Silly me. Come on. There we go. We'll turn, put the air in, and then a small, uh, a small uh, charger. And the reason why is I want to put a hard stone on um, just to make sure it doesn't break. So we got to have a little, uh, put a little RNG in here, I guess. A small battery just to make sure it has enough power to cover the hard stone, I believe is miscellaneous hard stone. All right, so we're at 1,101 points, okay? The pump, configure the pumps, pumps. Okay, and obviously we don't need 90 power on this. We just do the, turn it down. Another advantage, even though we don't really need too much power on this thing, obviously we're just powering the Hearthstone, we can take this power from this vehicle and transfer it up and down the line too to act as a recharge station so it's not necessarily wasted power and i'll show you what i mean when i'm in the campaigns if you uh, want subscribe and follow my videos and it'll be a lot easier to sh see when this comes into play and uh definitely show you how it's going to trade the power to other units it's kind of like a a group recharger is what I'm thinking of it going to be. Okay, and then let's put a little beam of two here. And then the next thing is see if it floats. It should. Okay, so it floats. And the cost of it is going to be let's go ahead and sell, uh, sell. save it. We're going to go supply line and we're going to go. Mark two, if I can spell right, there we go. Go to load vehicle. So it's 1,201. So it's actually more expensive than the supply one version. But the difference is this one won't move. Okay. But the difference is the size of the trade area. I'm significantly going to use a lot more. I'm going to significantly use a lot less parts to make that same trade bridge. And I think what I can do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set up the the trade parts. So what I want to do is I want to hold about 30% of the battery. We do not want to keep any material at all. And we're going to set it up as cargo and I set it up for trade of 5. So Basically, now it's going to be able to trade all its material away. It'll act as a trade beacon. All right. And we're going to go ahead and make sure we save that. So if you're new here, you, you like to see with this, ve this vehicle and the trade supply line and how efficient it will be, why don't you hit that subscribe button and then follow me. If you're already my subscriber, thank you very much for your support. 
Thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you next time.